Hello. Híjole. Hold on, let's do this again, shall we? Hello. Excellent. I, I've been far away, Twin Cities, and I forgot I got to say hello twice before someone says hello once. So let's do it the three times. Aw, oh, snap. Did a Twin Cities joke. All right. <laughs> hello. All right. How y'all doing? Uh, see, I love the honest ones. I love the folks that just be like, damn, today is tired. It's cloudy. Damn. I was in 80 degree weather yesterday, and now I'm not. Oh. Ouch. Yeah. But, but my mother taught me how to sew her style. It's very important. My mom only has one eye, but she can still thread, uh, thread, thread through a needle. It's bad. It's mean. So if you ever, anybody know one-eyed people or need help, help in soap, my mom. She taught me. It's bad. Anyways. So, uh, are we here? We're here for a reading, right? Yes? Yes! Good, good, good. I am not your MC of the night. I am here as a representative of the St. Paul Almanac that is uh, the, uh, what do you say, the, 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 the mama? The mama of this series? Shall we say that? I guess that would work. Uh, this is the welcoming you to the Lower Town Reading Jam and uh, our sponsor, St. Paul Almanac. Um, if you want to know more about the St. Paul Almanac, you want to buy the books, the books are right there somewhere. I think they're on the desk table right there. And you can always get them at the Black Dog Cafe. Let's give a big shout out to the Black Dog. <laughs> Woo! So now, for our MC of the evening, curator of intersectionality, I would like to call also a, a personal friend. She's an award-winning poet and writer. Most recently, she was awarded a Bush Fellowship and a fellowship in the Cultural Community Leadership Institute at Intermedia Arts, and was sponsored by the, which was sponsored by the Bush Foundation and named a fellow in the Many Voices Fellowship at Lat Playwright Center. Uh, Andrea won the Verve Grant for Spoken Word Artist and the Naked Stages Grant for Emerging Performance Artist at the Pillsbury House Theater. She was even a Givens fo uh, Foundation Fellow working with Amiri Baraka and Jay Otis Powell. I always wonder how to do that. Powell. She has won the Loft Mentor Series and the Napa Valley Writers Conference Scholarship, and Andrea earned her Master's of Science. I did not know this. Master's of Science. I could science in community economic development. From, so, you know, huh? I'm gonna say that for you. So, am I not supposed to read this whole thing? But I, okay, 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 here I am. From Southern New Hampshire University in Manchester, NH. Anybody from New Hampshire in the house? No one. All right. She also earned a Bachelor of Science in Human Services, Interpersonal Communications from Metro State, and an MFA in Creative Writing from Hamlin University. Give it up for your host, your curator of intersectionality, Andrea Jackson! Andrea Jenkins! <laughs> Robert Jenkins! Yeah, Jenkins! <laughs> so how, about a, how about a big hand for Robert Caribbe? You guys don't know, this man is a bad man. And I'm so thrilled that he um, welcomed you all and did the introduction and said all the thank yous so we can just get straight to business. But I do want to thank the St. Paul Almanac for inviting me to be here. And I want to thank all of you out there. You guys look amazing. I'm so overwhelmed by everybody that showed up tonight. We got an amazing uh, crew of people that are going to come out and do their thing for you. But tonight, November 20th, is a day called the Transgender Day of Remembrance. And the title of this show is Intersectionality, right? And so transgender people are those people who intersect the genders, right? They move through um, male and female and create all kinds of new identities. So for Transgender Day of Remembrance, I just want us to think about all of the transgender people who have been murdered and particularly transgender women of color, like myself. Um, in the past year, 288 
people from my community have been murdered world round. And so all around the country, all around the world, tonight, November 20th, people are lighting candles as a vigil for those individuals to remember their spirits and to honor their struggles and to say that we are gonna continue to fight to keep our community safe from harm. So tonight's show is about intersectionality and I'm gonna read a little short story. It's called Pink and Blue, a short love story. She loves me, she loves me not. That's what I keep telling myself each night after dining with her. It's been seven months and we still haven't kissed. Sure, there have been lingering hugs that feel really good and glancing smiles that melt my heart to stone. She loves me. She loves me not. I got time and she has no freedom. Our choices are dictated by the forces of our artificial environments. Busyness for the sake of being busy. And then there is art, creation, culture. But even more than that, they are shaped by the societal norms that have been so deeply embedded in the trenches, like journalists in the war on terror. We don't even recognize it. Only the shock and awe is real. Those damn people with their monthly ideologies, snap judgments, and those stares that bore right through you. Can you believe she's with him? Uh, uh, I mean, her? What's up with that? I want to tell her it's okay to love me. I want to say, let go and follow your heart's desire. I want to say that we can be the new modern family, postmodern even, but I don't say that. And each time I give up and think to myself, this can never work out, she calls and that dusky voice says, I got a couple of hours on Thursday evening and I'm all caught up again. She loves me. I think she's attracted to my masculinity. Or is it my femininity? Or is it the dual nature of my identity that is drawing her in? Is it the fact that I can offer up adventure just by being? Her mind is sharp and bright. She loves foods from different cultures and writes in multiple genres. Not that different from me in that aspect. She is a dancer in a symbolic choreography that suggests I am open to all the universe has to offer. She loves me not. I think I'm attracted to her interior life, the side that few are privileged to, to witness the life that is bound up with constrictions, ropes, and restraints. The part of her soul that wants to be controlled to a point and only after consent. I think I am attracted to that part that wants more. More sensuality, more carnality, more abundance, more love. She loves me. She loves me not. That's what I keep telling myself each time I want to reach out and take her hand and hold it in mine. And look into her tiny eyes and say the words that want to come out but don't. The words that would inform her about the complexity of my life. A life that has been shaped in a restrictive society that forced me to be someone that was not me a life that took on a life of its own. This feeling of being female while living in a male's body. My life is one that few ever experience, but those who do have insight into something beautiful in the context of the human experience. 
and yet I am hesitant to place her hand in my hand and to look into those tiny eyes and say those words. People are willing to accept the fact that I have successfully made the transitional journey from male to female. In fact, many are in all of this. They call me things like brave, confident, courageous. What they are not willing to understand is that I am still attracted to beautiful women. Duality has been a part of human nature since the beginning of time. In Hinduism, the god Shiva simultaneously represents creation and destruction. In ancient Egypt society, one of its greatest rulers was Queen Hapsu. Hapsu. Hapsu, Hapsu. There you go. <laughs> Who ruled as a pharaoh and embodied both male and female qualities. In the universe, we witness duality on a daily basis, night and day positive and negative, good and evil, neither can exist without the other. She loves me, but not really. Maybe she is in love with that which, rep with that which I represent, and I, I am in love with her, really? Don't get me wrong, it would be nice to find someone who is willing to take a chance with me, maybe do a little samba dance with me, someone who is willing to take a stance for me. Yes, that would be nice. It has been said that teamwork requires trust, a willingness to believe that your partner has your back and is ready to fight to salvage the only true love they've ever known. The last time we drank Riesling was from plastic cups. There were two cups, one pink and one blue. Well, actually, it was pretty dark, and we really couldn't tell which was which, but there was a choice to be made. We sat in the Minneapolis Sculpture Garden, and she chose blue. Does it matter, she asked. Yes, I replied. Why? Because it's always the little things that really matter, I said. Small gestures have a way of sending signals, yet in our politeness, we often miss them. Or maybe I should only speak for me, since that is the only person I can speak for. Sometimes it's just a look that says so much more than words. How long have I waited? Waited just to hold you, wrap my love around you. To say I love you to someone who doesn't have the who doesn't have my blood running through their veins. And then I see that look that laughs and weeps, that look that longs for connection with another soul, that look that seeks direction, protection, and what I fear most is rejection. She loves me. She loves me not. Thank you. It's hot up here, y'all. <laughs> Thank you. So the next act coming to the stage is two young, amazing spoken word artists from the B Collective, featuring JP Arcani, woo -hoo. yeah, JP, and Clara Young. Why don't you welcome them up to the stage? Another big round of applause for JP and Clara.
work with me. I'm a little nervous. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. All right. Just family. <laughs> what are you? They ask. I'm what's on your spoon when they pull me out of the melting pot. I am. Yes. A native Afro Thai queer trans pretty boy who loves playing sports, not girls. Dreams of peace each night while living amongst the broken. Attends church with his Baptist grandmother yet hates religion. Prays to Mother Nature and can't stand Father Time. Dances to bachata music and sings Negro spirituals at night. A trained up child, I am. Yes, an athletic artist, big headed baby, carrying courage, destined every day for greatness, happily intersecting justice and knowledge. Love yourself. I am. Yes. But they push me into boxes, restraining my ability to break away from the types of stereos that play tapes of misogyny over and over again. I'm afraid. I'm hurt. I'm confused. I'm a lot. And for a man to admit that, how do you react? How should I react? It's rhetorical. Moving on. I am, yes. Moving past the hurt. Moving from behind the curtain. Moving in bigger, better things. Moving mountains all around me. And I'm finally coming out of the closet with every one of my identities. I am, yes. What's on your spoon when you pull me out of the melting pot? Thank you. Lean back when people speak to you. Wear your shoulders like curtains, fold open, but not too broad. These are the things I've learned. Swallow in small pieces. Never open your mouth too wide. Speak in smaller pieces. When I grow up, I want to be the kind of guy that buys flowers just because. Hold your fingers awry, swoon, blush, glimmer. These are the things I've learned. At 12 years old, I left tomboyhood forever, stumbled on my pubescent body as I walked out the door. When unsure, giggle. Make yourself small. Sit into your hip. These are the things I've learned. Pride should be held like water, whatever that means. Smile. Elisa taught me how to dance reggaeton in her backyard, and Bryant Fitzgerald showed me how to kiss in the playground behind my house. I studied dress up with Disney, craved Brandy's braids and the Little Mermaid's tiny pink belly button, painted masks for myself like lace, nena, knowing, porcelain gaze, a battered purple feather picked up off the sidewalk and sent through the wash, like who knew it only took six weeks to fall in love. I hid behind poems about Eden, escape, became pronouns without antecedents, drew my eyes wide like rainbows, not realizing that the colors we fly are nothing more than light reflected through our tears. Everything is a question, like if I never finish this sentence, it might just take off and fly, leave me breathless. Masks like sunglasses, like smiles, like sex, like dress up turned to fashion. Slip shallow into the gate of a bell. Walk deeper. The hips are the pistons of the female body. These are the things I've learned. Choreograph your walk, dip, slide into place, drop, quit, smile. And I'm a good actor. But at some point, I got so deep in character that I couldn't find my way out. Like exit stage left had somehow disappeared, and my only break was backstage to apply more makeup. Your hair will set you free. Touch it gently, swiftly, twist it over, tuck it back, tie, and let it swing side to shoulder. Fluff it up or smooth it down, and if it spills, toss it back over your shoulder for luck. For those that are without, false freedom, 
an extension of your sentence, can be purchased for as low as $49.99 a month. These are the things I've learned. A couple in Canada last year decided to raise their third child outside the gender binary. There's a preschool in Sweden that uses no pronouns, calls the children not boys and girls, but friends. People worry that this might be abusive, that the children will be confused and that if we never give them their roles, how will they know how to act? But consider, Mr. Child Psychologist, that maybe these children for once won't be acting, but being. Imagine what it might be like for the first time in your life to meet someone who isn't a he or a she, but simply themselves. Then wonder whether it is more abusive to thrust us into these cast lists or to make us play outside of them. Cover. Cross your legs at the thighs, even when standing. Eyelashes hide lights you didn't even know you had. Therefore, blink often. And you, you're brave, you're fearless. Somehow you bust the fourth wall wide open, stepped down into the audience and walked out. You ignored casting calls, quit your acting class. But the voices keep murmuring in the background. Don't let your legs get too far ahead of each other. Pull back your chin. Draw the curve in your back concave to hold hands babies, unshaven histories. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the real concern here is not whether the child will know how to act, but rather whether we will know how to treat them, whether to coddle or crush them, how to love them, whether they're gay. Because after all, how can you and I get gay married if we aren't both girls to begin with? For everything, use your fingers, not your palms. Underwear, like secrets, should be seen only in glimpses. These are the things I've learned. When I grow up, I want to be the kind of guy that buys flowers, just because. But for that, I'll need to be with the kind of girl that likes getting flowers. Tip your head to the side. Hold your pride like water, whether that means in your mouth or not at all. Close your lips and roll them over. These are the things I've learned. These days I ponder pronouns in the space between my shoulder blades. It is here where they lie heavy heads and whisper into my thoughts like dreams that one day you and I might become plural and why are they all so dang subjective? I ponder linguistics, like hen in Finnish is a genderless pronoun, and I wonder what they do in Spanish where every adjective bears your identity. I wonder if the Finnish wonder what we do in English without a word like hen. Make yourself small. Sit into your hip. These are the things I've learned. Elbows, wrists, and pinkies should be at angles of 80, 110, and 130 degrees. Bend your ankles as straight as possible. For months, I've been searching for a gender neutral term for sir and ma'am. I'm looking for a way to tell a stranger I care, say I'm sorry for all the people that stare, hope I could ever make up for assuming. I wanna say, wherever you are, I'll meet you there. But I guess that kind of respect comes only to the sirs and ma'ams of the world. Weave your hands in front of you, linking, lacing fingers, locking knuckles. Falter. Trace your lip, ear, brow. Grasp your elbow, neck, abdomen. Clutch your body close whisper soft songs of sorrow as it sleeps in your arms. Truth falls convex, something that even the reality of our bodies cannot hold.
JP, R. Kenny, and Clara Young. Have a big round of applause. Man, you can tell I'm old and they're young, right? They're all reading from my iPads. I got a big old notebook. <laughs> old school, right? So here comes another young performer. Her name is Liz Lassiter. She goes by Redefine. And she is going to be accompanied by Prophet T. Give a big hand of applause for Liz Lassiter and Prophet T. They're going to sing for you guys. This is going to be amazing. You can be honest. This song is about love. If you're in love, raise your hands. Good. If it's not with someone, it better be with yourself. Yes, yes. Your definition of it has it make you feel Tell me what you'd say that truly makes it real See, kings and queens, philosophers have tried so hard to find Tell me what it means to you, dear Never mind. Love is kind when the world is cold. Love stays strong when the fight gets old. Love's a shoulder to lean on. Love is you. Love's like a water when the well runs dry. Quench my thirst, keep me alive. A shoulder to lean on. Love is you. 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 Is it possible that there's a kiss that's so divine? Or am I just a fool? Is it all in my mind? Love, right? Love is you. Love is you. 
I tell y'all, amazing, right? Can we get another hand for Redefine and Property. Man, I'm loving this lineup we got for you guys, and we still have more performers to go. So next on the stage, I'm gonna bring up a Minneapolis school board member, PhD and my good friend, Tracine Asbury. What an amazing opportunity. something that's new and I have my old school method but I also have my readers too so I'm coming all to pieces so. <laughs> what a great opportunity to be here I'm gonna read some short a few shorts and then one long reading are you tired too did you wake up this morning thinking about how your life impacts the lives of the, youth, of the little cutie pies that slept peacefully across the hall and down the stairs? Did you lay there after a restless night because you woke up at 3 this morning and again at 4.30 thinking about how the bills you paid and the ones you needed to wait to pay would determine who could get new shoes, a new coat, and those braces to straighten her teeth? Did you recognize that they're your greatest investment, the greatest dividends, the payouts when you, when I, listen, learn, love, and do our best to get it right, to do it better? Did you walk to their doors and take a peek at their beautiful faces with the clarity that after they rest and wake for the day, if you did your job right, if I did mine, they would be okay to say good morning to every face they see and to be ready for what the day would bring. Did you even have your cup of hot tea? Have you even brushed your teeth? That be me? That's how I be creating our definition of family with their father's visits, his donors, his donor seed, and me. Before the day even started, are you tired too? We, we must remember lest we forget. Things that held us together, tightly, closely, knitted a bond that could not be broken, even from Africa making the middle passage to America taking on the pain of slaves, never losing the reality of being royalty, demonstrating the ability to survive and then to overcome. We were we. Through it all that broke our backs, held us back, put us on the back, put us on our backs, made us go to the back of the bus, the restaurant, the waiting line, for whatever, whenever, we were we. Still confident, focused, strong, we stayed together because we must remember lest we forget. Now things are clouded, our true strength faded, our true purpose jaded. What do we really know about our true legacy? To lift our heads, straighten our backs, ignite our minds, widen our vision. It is only because we were we. We must remember, lest we will forget. What happened? The abduction from the motherland, real. The unwilling passage across seas as a hostage, real. 
being broken, stolen, naked, chained to degrade, real. As for our destiny, we were we. We must remember, lest we will forget. Ask yourselves, is this it? You the way you are? Me the way I am? Coasting, fighting, barely even seeing a glimpse of how truly incredible we are? Blind to the royalty that runs through our veins. We were we. We must remember, lest we forget. Do we know who we are without fragmentation, chaos, lies, and confusion? Well, I know for you. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are heirs of the mother and father, joint heirs with the son. We are priceless, we are miraculous, we are royalty. We are we. We must remember, lest we forget. We are not meant, we were not meant to survive. We were not meant to achieve. Yet here we are. Here we stand tall across seas, in chains, marching, sitting in, in gaps. Wherever we were, we are. We've remained, lest we must remember, or we will forget. Thank you. This last one, a love letter everyone needs to hear. You are worth the wait, just wait and see. Your expe expectations should be high. Don't believe those who attempt to dumb you down. Ask for what you need, and if they try to act like they didn't hear you, smile really big and whisper every word directly in their ears. You are worth the time and attention required to know your story and understand your language and the language you speak and the dreams you've deferred. Keep the promises to yourself, even if others forget or fail to follow through. Be bold enough to know yourself, and yes, you will be alone because there's only one you. Now that you know the love you deserve, what you gonna do? Thank you. Y'all can give Tracy in a bigger hand than that. <laughs> so, hey, Kimberly just reminded me that there is a bucket, actually a couple of buckets, are going to be coming around. And if you like what you have heard so far, and we still got more show to go, uh, please put a little something, something in the bucket. In fact, put a lot of something, something in the bucket, all right? Because this show is dope, man. I'm, I'm really amazed and thrilled that all of these, all of my friends decided to come out and play with me tonight. So I really appreciate it, y'all. Next up on the stage, is a dear friend who has been just doing her thing, blowing up all around the Twin Cities, y'all. Seriously, uh, putting it down. Two weeks ago, I saw her at late night. Um, y'all see, she's up on the wall over yeah. here, yeah. curating this reading series. Uh, Nemo Farrar is everywhere. So give her a big round of applause and welcome her to this stage. as a woman and as an African woman in America and all of that, like the, the fact that I'm actually speaking. And so 
um, that and uh, among other things has just kind of like been weighing my spirit down which and 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 for those of you that have been at the late night series you guys know about my cave it's been making me want to like just go back into myself and hide which I am going to do so right after this reading. This is the last thing I'm going to do before the end of this year. So thank you so much, Andrea, for inviting me to do this. Um, um, intersections is a very big thing, right? Especially as a refugee human being who, like, is far away from home. Like, in a completely different continent than you were born in. And so, um, and so I like I just had a lot of things come up for me as I was thinking about this. Um, so I'm going to recite a verse from the Quran, and I don't know I've been, I haven't done this for a very long time. Um, so just bear with me. This is going to be on TV, huh? Okay. <clears throat> I was really nervous about that, but that's okay. Mm. يا أيها الناس إنا خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم وجعلناكم شعيبا وقبائل لتعارفوا لتعارفوا إن إنا ذكرناكم عند الله أتقى <laughs> o mankind, indeed we have created you from male and female and made you into peoples and tribes so that you may know one another. Gujarat 4, 49.13 So that you may know one another. <laughs> I recite this verse at the risk of being condemned, at the risk of being damned. If you do, damn. If you don't, mis Muslims might say, how dare she? Many others, Americans, anybody might say, how dare she? But I find the courage for the few that say, we want to listen and learn about what we should be and how we should not be divided and conquered, killed and controlled, ignorant and envious, competing for all the wrong reasons. Here's a universal thought. Freedom is something we should imagine, something that we should imagine how to exist and know the world is a colorful place, full of spices, full of twists in the tongues, of people from faraway lands that speak languages and dance in, dance with their hips. Know the ways different skins color, different skin colors glisten under the sun. We are created to examine, to bear witness to that which is different, to be in awe, to breathe together, reaching far, using kindness across borders and continents, I come to you from a cliff in the continent of Africa. I learned much about myself after I found you. And there is much you can learn from me. My ancestors were once nomads that stood up that stood up to the sun, roaming air at lands in search of water and life sustaining plants, the heaviest things we carried or the wisdom in our words and poetry. I, I carry those stories underneath my skin. They dance in my tongue as I trace myself beyond oceans, calling my father's father's names. Nim'a Hussein, Farah, Ali, Muhammad, Hassan, Hussein, Abakar, Muhammad, Mumin, Adan, Fiqi, Ali, Musa, beyond oceans. Men and women who never imagined their daughter would fly so far away, but here I am. Nemo Eshdafar, he reduced to numbers, social security. Tradition called. I questioned her. I questioned her. She once was beautiful, but we passed her. I still hang on to parts of her. And then progress called. I questioned also. 
so much uncertainty about the future. I stand in the middle as a body of contradictions, a body of confusion, cells once filled with celebrations, a meeting place of the past and the becoming. I am new and old, everything and nothing. I carry it all in body parts that has been fed in different continents that cross many border borders. The convergence of languages, lost wisdoms, the existence in the bottom of rivers known to very few, the juba and the shabel, and, and contested waters once, once like the Nile between Ethiopia and the Egypt, dirty waters like the Mississippi, and even dirtier, the Atlantic. We sit next to each other in the bus, in the classroom. You're disgusted by my existence, yet you inhale my exhale. Damn. Damn you, damn us, damn humans. Burden, given inheritance, saturated with hatred, drinking waters, contaminated with cruelty. Greed greets me, assimilates, assimilates me, interrogates me, integrates me, tells me I am no longer Nim'a. And I am now Nemo Laws, mind, my body, passports. I am appropriated, my patterns are appropriated, but my garments are rejected. I am pathways to ways forgotten, reminding you I am ancient. I am movements, migrations, a reminder that we are morphing, but we can never let go of what we once were. I am a reminder. I carry the breaking and the building of humans, of humanity, in a ball of tension on my right shoulder. I try to get rid of it through moving across borders from broken country, from one broken country to another across dance, floor, dance floors, trying to release this tension. I constantly stress over ways and means to save myself, to save you, to save me wondering if there is such a thing as justice. I am last in navigating the process where we become projects and plans fit into boxes, damn boxes. <clears throat> Recently I've learned that freedom is costly and it scares the bravest of us. So I've come to this, think about it. Love is a revolutionary. It is a revolutionary act, but before everything, you must learn to love yourself first. Stare at your flaws, embrace them. Then I will be waiting to love you. Till then, I say, my peace be upon you. Thank you. I think about intersections. Yeah. 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 Can we get another big round of applause for Nemo? Thank yeah. you, Nemo. Yeah. And give Nemo a big hug. All right, who want to hear some more Redefine? Y'all want to hear one more song for Redefine and Property? Give them a big, big, big round of applause and they'll come up on this stage. Okay, um, I'm gonna take a little time to let you know about some great music events that are going on, if that's okay. Um, if you like what you're hearing and want to hear more of it and some other awesome, great band music, I'd love to see you at Arnella's every Tuesday night from 8.30 till we don't feel like playing anymore. <laughs> it's free, no cover. Um, yes to the college students in the room and those who just don't feel like paying a cover. <laughs> Um, so I'd love to see you out every Tuesday. If you're free, come out. It'll be a great, it's bound to be a great time. 
Uh, this song, funny story, is my first original song that I've ever written ever in my entire life. And it's about love, again, connections. And I'll just let you, I'll let you decide. I didn't know I was waiting This time is time lies Ever fading I meet someone beautiful Immediate perfection Climbing in the mist mm, I'm willing the risk see your smile my eyes free exchange your kiss my love free exchange your glance at my soul free exchange A spoken word, a history so new. I barely understand what we are, but I know you. First touch, first rain, so so. familiar faces in here so that means you've been to a performance or two or three or five <laughs> so you know what comes next and I'm gonna ask that you help okay I'll sing first then I need everyone to repeat after me
out here, right? to come back up to the stage so y'all can sprinkle them with some more love. Stand to the side. We got Mimo, Rob, Liz Lassiter, Redefine, Proper T, Tracy Asbury, Clara Young, JP Arcani, Intersectionality. Can y'all give them all a big round of applause? What about a big, big round of applause for Takumba Aiken? What about another big round of applause for St. Paul Almanac? We give it up for the Black Dog Cafe. Yeah. All right, one more big round of applause for yourselves. You guys are beautiful tonight. Thank you so much for being here. We love you. We love doing this. Thank you, thank you, thank you.